And we will finish the day with a presentation d'ouverture, what we say in French, an opening presentation. We didn't talk much, much about open government data, um, so we will do it now. And especially the link between, the possible link between government data and research data. Thank you very much to Dr. Jean-Luc Cochard for your presentation. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Okay. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, hope you still have some energy for this last uh, 30 minutes of talk uh, presentation from, from my side. Uh, I will um, give you an overview of uh, what we did at uh, a Swiss uh, level, Swiss governmental level, regarding uh, open data, uh, namely open government data. And I tried to bring some, uh, uh, some possible uh, collaboration or um, uh, um, experience exchanges uh, with uh, what is uh, under realization, uh, at least at the Swiss level, on open research data. So my name is Jean-Luc Cochard. I'm working for the Swiss Federal Archives. I have a background of uh, IT. I spent some years here, uh, 30 or more years ago, as a student, so I'm very uh, happy to be here again. Um, that's a little bit changed uh, since uh, that time, but some buildings are still here. Um, so, my talk will be um, uh, a brief overview of what has been done uh, in Switzerland about open government data uh, since a few years. Uh, a small history. I will speak some time, uh, spend some time about the pilot portal, uh, which is still uh, in operation um, uh, now on the opendata.admin.ch. Uh, uh, a few slides about uh, some technical aspects. Uh, I won't go too much in detail, but just to show you a little bit what it means from a technical point of view to uh, do harvesting of uh, different data sources uh, around uh, different administration environments. And um, then a few words about the current project, uh, which is a, follower, a following project of this uh, pilot portal, uh, which is in relation to a global strategy at the federal and uh, all um, uh, administrative level in Switzerland. And finally, uh, with some uh, consideration about uh, collaboration, I imagine a few days ago, uh, so before uh, learning everything of today, uh, so I will, I will talk a little bit of that, and uh, that will be my, my conclusion. So before um, starting with the history, I think it's important for uh, for uh, being clear to uh, give uh, some definition. Uh, a government uh, data is um, data which is collected, produced, managed, treated, and stored by public administration. Uh, and uh, as part of their legal duties. So it's really something which is embedded into the legal uh, uh, activities of all the administration. Not all administration have to collect data or to manage data, but at least uh, now I think, I, maybe I should say all uh, have this, this role of collecting uh, uh, and managing data. Um, we can qualify this uh, government data as open to have this open government data. If um, basically these data are made available free of charge, and under uh, terms of use which are as little restrictive as possible, and uh, in formats that allows uh, for the maximum of mount, amount of technical reuse. That's very important. Uh, PDFs uh, are not very well uh, accepted by the community of uh, uh, developers. Uh, to extract data and to make application out of uh, tables uh, and, and uh, in PDF files. So uh, we here speak more of raw data, um, Excel maybe, but CSV files or uh, any kind of raw, uh, very uh, basic data. 
And the last condition, which is important, uh, it is also opened uh, under the condition that its uh, disclosure is in compliance with the federal regulation of data protection. So we don't uh, want to open data or to have open government data on a portal with personal data inside. So that's really one important aspect that has to be checked before any uh, administrative data is published on an open, uh, open government data portal. So now back a little bit to the history. Uh, things started uh, between 2011 uh, 2012. I'm speaking too much German uh, in Bern. Um, by different procedural requests from different members of the parliament who tried to uh, ask about uh, what is the position of the government regarding open data in Switzerland and bring this at the level of uh, discussion and uh, require some answer from the, the government. Uh, in parallel, uh, in 2012, and I think it's important to mention it, uh, the first open data portal in Switzerland was launched at the city of Zurich, who, who made it available uh, under this uh, URL. It's still the current version uh, running now, but in a in few uh, weeks, uh, there will be a new release uh, of this uh, open data portal. Okay. Uh, and um, in 2013, there was a, a report published uh, as a, an answer to uh, a postulate of Mr. Wasserfallen, uh, whose uh, title was OGD as e-government strategic key topic and that was the uh, initial uh, uh, starting point of um, the federal activity. Um, also, in the same time, there was a, a first project uh, that we called OGD at uh, Confederation, who has the purpose to uh, build this first uh, pilot uh, portal, opendata.admin.ch, that I will uh, that I will uh, highlight now. So that's a little bit of the, of the story of these uh, activities in, in Switzerland. So uh, open data, uh, OGD, uh, OGD at Confederation, that's a combination of different, uh, uh, or collaboration of different um, administration unit offices who work together under the umbrella of the Swiss Federal Archive uh, to uh, build uh, 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 this pilot portal. And some of them, so the five here, uh, had some data to be published on this portal. Uh, the federal uh, chancellery, chancellery and uh, uh, e-governments were just more supporting uh, a partner for uh, different activities and, and financing but they, they had no data uh, to publish. So that was the initial version that was launched in September last year, uh, and uh, that was quite successful that, uh, since that time. Uh, between this uh, starting point and now, two others or three other entities joined the project. Uh, we are very proud that we got the canton of Zurich with two uh, offices there who uh, are also submitting uh, data regularly uh, to this portal, and uh, the Federal Office of Public Health and the Federal Office for the Environment, uh, who are also uh, now uh, present on, on the portal. So that's the current uh, situation with uh, eight, nine, depending of if we count two uh, offices here, uh, who are uh, active uh, on the portal and, and bringing uh, regularly new, new data. Um, that's a screenshot of the homepage of this uh, open data uh, portal, a uh, pilot portal. Um, it's uh, a search engine, so if we want to make it simple, it's a search engine and we are searching uh, through the metadata of different data sets that are uh, supplied by the different administration units. 
So what we have here uh, on the portal itself is just a database of metadata. And we can search them uh, through different ways. But one uh, of um, the uh, key aspects of this portal is basically it's a way to, uh, to access data. It's also a way to uh, have a look at applications that have been built based on this data. So we do some kind of promotion of developers who develop applications using data sets that we have on, on the portal. Here we can see uh, partly uh, a screenshot of one of these applications. And that's something quite interesting. Uh, and it's also a good way for us to have indication of what is used. Because people who develop are very interested to get some kind of uh, promotion of their development. Uh, and we are interested to see what has been developed based on the data. So it's a win-win situation that we, uh, we have through this kind of promotional uh, uh, aspect here. It's not just on the application developed by the government. It's application developed by any kind of uh, uh, private company. Uh, uh, so we don't have any, any restriction. It's the only restriction is that these people can demonstrate that at least one data set uh, which is uh, available here is used within the application. And the third uh, aspect is just to um, uh, browse through the different organizations which are uh, present on the portal. One uh, element that differs compared to other uh, OGD portal in Europe is uh, that from the very beginning it was decided that we need a multilingual portal uh, and we uh, were able uh, to, um, to build uh, within a few months these four, lingual, uh, four, four uh, language uh, portal, uh, French, English, Italian, and German. So as I said, this portal is a search engine. So we can here type in uh, a few keywords and we receive a list of data sets that have these keywords in their uh, description, in their metadata. That's one way. Um, and there are also different uh, ways to filter uh, this uh, list of data sets. We can filter by organization, we can filter by tags or keywords, we can filter by category, we have a predefined list of uh, categories. We can filter also by formats, uh, and we can also filter by license, uh, so term of use for these uh, different data sets. So it's a way, if we combine these different uh, uh, dimensions, we can get to uh, maybe the right uh, data set that the person is looking for. So um, if, for example, here I do uh, 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 filtering on the data set from the Swiss Federal uh, Statistic Statistical Office, I get 1,691 uh, 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 data sets. It shows that uh, it is a very uh, good supplier of data sets of our portal, um, the major one, let's say. Uh, and I, I get uh, here the list order by relevance, um, whatever it means, uh, of these uh, different uh, data sets. So if I select the first one, uh, I come into another uh, page that goes a step further in detail and show me the real resource file that I could download uh, and get on my uh, computer uh, for a further uh, usage. So if I select this one, I come to this page and here I have the possibility to uh, say download. What I wanted to highlight here is that the resource file, so the real raw data file, is uh, at an URL which is outside the scope of the opendata.admin.ch. It is within the uh, uh, domain of the uh, Federal Office of Statistical Statistics. And that's a very key aspect uh, of this uh, 
solution and the major, most of the open data uh, portal, we take care of the metadata. We don't take care of the raw data. The raw data are under the responsibility of the different administration units. They have to make sure that these data are not corrupted, that there is no risk of, uh, of fraud uh, of any kind. We are just taking care of the metadata that are stored uh, nearby the, um, the, the portal. Um, a, few, a few figures, uh, as was mentioned, the portal is in operation since 13 months now. We uh, started with four um, offices or um, data supplier, and now we have nine on the portal. And uh, a slow uh, growth in the number of uh, data sets uh, from 1,600 to 1,800, uh, more or less. Uh, here again, uh, uh, the major part is from the uh, BFS, uh, so the statistical office, and they could very uh, easily uh, grow to uh, 10,000 without any problem, but since we are in a pilot phase, they just stay with uh, the domain that we, we selected. Um, here, a little bit of the connection we have on the portal. At the very, very beginning, uh, when we started, we had uh, up to 10,000 uh, uh, users uh, during the first uh, week of usage of the portal. Unfortunately, it, goes, it went down, but it's usual. Um, and uh, we see that regularly we have up to 500 users uh, coming on the portal to, uh, to search for, for data sets. Uh, we had here a, a, a quite a, a good increase, and uh, here it was just because uh, we disclosed the new uh, health insurance uh, premiums for next year. Uh, and it seems uh, a lot of people were interested to get this information quite uh, early. Uh, it's really the raw data. It's not the data you can find on different portals and that you can compare, but uh, it was still uh, uh, interesting to, to get this raw data quite early for a few persons. Um, so that's uh, a few of the, uh, of the information I, can, I will give you about this, um, this portal. Another uh, drawing here or figures is uh, uh, one of the few questions we ask uh, during a survey in uh, uh, early this year, and where the question was, uh, how important is it uh, for you this uh, uh, free access to this uh, OGD data? And um, so we have some pre-selected possible answer, which are these uh, five here. And then for, um, there was a possibility uh, through here to write down its own answer. And um, so what we can see that transparency is a, is a key um, in, uh, aspect. Um, interest for application that could be developed based on this uh, raw data is also something interesting. Um, and for developers, really the raw data themselves have a very high value to build application and visualization. And uh, in the others, something which is interesting, and it comes normally if we have put this here in the predefined answer, probably the uh, percentage would have been higher. Uh, people very often say we have the right to this data because we pay taxes for that. So uh, we, we should have the access uh, free of charge to, to this data. Um, so let me uh, dig in a little bit in, in, uh, in the architecture of the system. Uh, we have two parts here. One part here uh, is the responsibility I have with the uh, uh, OGD portal which means I have to uh, make sure that uh, different uh, software instance based on a, a platform called TCAN are up and running. 
uh, in order for a user to be able to, uh, to connect to this central uh, instance for front-end, uh, which is the open data that admin.ch, and uh, to make some search. Uh, and is searching through this metadata uh, database. And these databases uh, here, here, and here are uh, regularly updated uh, by data which are held by the different administration who are part of the project. And the administration has this responsibility here to uh, offer through uh, an internet uh, server uh, access to its raw data and to a specific uh, file which is a metadata file uh, which has a format that has been defined uh, between uh, uh, us and, and, uh, and them, and uh, there are some uh, software elements that are run uh, re regularly to uh, read these, these uh, documents, these files, and to uh, bring new metadata here, and then uh, and, uh, one, step, one uh, layer above to the central uh, system. Uh, so what the user does, the user does a research here, and uh, in fact, when it is, uh, it found something of interest, it will directly, uh, when it downloads, go to the web uh, server, server of the data supplier to get a copy of a raw data file, to uh, connect eventually to a uh, uh, web service, or uh, possibly to a database. And that's something uh, interesting. Uh, when someone found a data file or data uh, resource, it doesn't need any more to come through the portal. It can directly, if he uh, stored the URL of the file, it can directly go to, uh, to, this, uh, uh, to, to this raw data. So here at the portal level, we don't see everybody who is uh, interested to download the file. We just see people who first search for a file and then probably there won't be any more on the portal. And there is a good comparison between uh, with a, a phone directory service. Every time you uh, call uh, a person, you never go always through a phone directory service. Once you found the phone number, you, you, uh, you, you store it uh, in your memory of your file and you directly call from, from this number. So the phone directory service access is not a good uh, indication of how many calls are made on the total uh, network of Swisscom, for example. And here we are in the same situation. We just see here in statistics people who are here, but we don't see here people who directly access the file uh, on the uh, web server of uh, the different uh, administrations. Um, the metadata formats we have at the moment in the pilot uh, version are uh, basically uh, Excel files where we have a list of all the parameters, all the metadata uh, information that needs to be uh, supplied. Or uh, another solution we tested uh, uh, is through an XML uh, file. So at the moment, it's a two kinds of uh, metadata. Uh, file format we are uh, offering uh, for, for the um, data supplier. I have uh, uh, five different such uh, drawings that tries to explain a little bit uh, the different uh, harvesting mechanisms that are in place. I don't want to go through all of them. Uh, this one is a very simple one. Uh, so I can maybe spend a, a few uh, moments about that. So we have here this central instance. We have the local instance, as I mentioned before. And uh, we here at the uh, uh, Federal Archives, we are placing the primary data and the metadata file on an Amazon S3 uh, because we don't have any, any web, service, uh, web server available for storing this, uh, this data. And uh, um, the harvester is, uh, is reading this metadata file here to bring this up to here. And uh, that's uh, very simple. We have much more complicated version here 
for the National Bibliotheque and some others for, the, for Swiss Topo. Probably you will get a copy of the presentation if you would like to browse through this and uh, come with questions. Uh, I can answer that, uh, but I don't want to, to go too much in detail here. Um, so, in 2013, we had this project, OGD at Confederation, whose purpose was to build this prototype, uh, this pilot uh, solution. And now, in 2014, let's say, we moved to another project, which was called OGD uh, Switzerland. Uh, the name is as an interest, because we here would like to offer uh, OGT portal not only for the administration at the federal level but for all administration levels and uh, confederation means federal level so Switzerland means every administration level so that's why also we changed the name to uh, really highlight the fact that uh, the solution here is for all uh, possible administration who would like to uh, supply data. And during this year, uh, one important uh, step was to uh, elaborate a strategy and to make it approved by the, uh, the Federal Council. Uh, that was in April this year, so that was a very uh, big milestone for, uh, milestone for us. Uh, and uh, after that, we were able to uh, start some preparation activities in implementing this uh, strategy, uh, which will last until 2018. So the world end in 2018 for us. <laughs> uh, we hope there will be a future after 2018, but things have to be uh, defined uh, uh, during this period for the next uh, period of maybe five, four, year, four years after 2018. So, what does it mean uh, to uh, define a strategy and what, is, uh, what are really the tasks to be done? Um, so, uh, the purpose of a strategy was to find a way to make sure that we have a successful solution um, at the end of 2018 because we had to prove that it was uh, a very uh, good idea to... Uh, uh, to build this uh, open uh, government data portal. And uh, in order to have this uh, successful general framework, there was a, a set of 13 measures that were defined. Uh, that goes from uh, analyzing and eventually modifying the legal framework for different offices. Uh, to make sure that they can publish some data as open data. Um, that's the case, for example, at the moment from, the, from Meteo Suisse, who uh, had some restriction in the possibility to, uh, to uh, bring data as uh, open data, and especially uh, on the, the aspect of free of charge. And uh, in order to solve this, there was a decision that the legal uh, structure or the legal environment has uh, to be changed. Uh, there are uh, some process of data release. So uh, as was mentioned uh, earlier, I don't know if it was in, in one of the workshops uh, at uh, data.gov.uk uh, in Great Britain, there are more than 1,000 uh, administrative units who are supplying data. Uh, that's clear, we cannot go to each of these possible suppliers and explain how to work, what to, uh, deli what to release. So uh, we need some processes, well-defined, well-described, uh, uh, that helps this uh, entity to, uh, to work on this uh, type of, uh, of portal. Uh, we plan also, based on some experience in other country, to uh, define some planning. It seems it's a good strategy to uh, bring a bunch of data uh, based on topics at the same time on the portal. And uh, that gives a very good uh, visibility of the portal uh, and interest for a new community of users. 
So uh, doing this kind of planning is something that we, we have to, uh, to run. Inventory of catalog, of data catalog at the federal level is something of really interest. Uh, as a member of the Swiss Federal Archive, we are very, very much interested to know uh, everything about uh, the different data sources that are collected within the whole unit of the administration. So to get this kind of inventory is uh, of interest for the portal itself to know what could come next, but also uh, from a point of view of, uh, of archival, uh, archi uh, archival aspects. The fees, as I mentioned, um, for Swiss metal Swiss fees was a problem. It's also a problem for different other offices who are um, getting part of a budget through a fees um, that they receive uh, by selling uh, some uh, some data uh, some data sets. Um, if they want to be open, if they need to be open. Um, they need to uh, give access to this data for free, so they will have less fees, so they will have a, a lower budget, and that may be a problem for them. So uh, there must be, uh, this topic must be addressed. Uh, implementation of the OGD portal, um, two minutes? Oh, yes. Um, okay, I'm nearly finished. Um, OGT portal, the current version you see was uh, a test and, and, and prototype version, so uh, we are uh, now in the process of uh, making a, a call for tender for a new, a new version. And plenty of other topics that I won't discuss now um, that are needed to be addressed. Um, the objective we have are different. Uh, first, we would like to enhance the transparency uh, in order to have a better democracy in the country. Um, OGD has an economic value um, that was evaluated to uh, something like one uh, billion per year uh, in Switzerland. So uh, releasing this by making this data uh, free uh, is of interest. Um, improving um, the administration efficiency. There are a lot of silos in the administration, so by having this data available, it's a way to, to get it. Uh, accountability of the government administration. It's just a small, very, uh, uh, um, yeah, that's more a joke, uh, application. In Bern, people uh, very often go to swim in the R, and they are very much interested to know what is the temperature of the river before they jump into the river. And uh, so this is a way to evaluate if the data uh, collected by the Office of uh, Environment with collecting temperature of uh, rivers is accurate or not, just as an idea. So I'm concluding um, collaboration. One idea of collaboration for me is clear. The data set which are on OGD or will be uh, even uh, with more data set on OGD are uh, for sure complementary to uh, possible data set from the research environment. Complementary means that researcher could use also this kind of data set to combine with their own research information, like statistics from the Federal uh, um, Office of Statistics. Uh, there are some of the topics that have been set up in the strategy and uh, one uh, among this list of 13 measures that could be also probably used once a strategy is defined uh, for open research. Uh, I think there are, there are quite some, uh, some interesting aspects to, uh, to include uh, in this topic. And uh, also, we gained a lot of experience in this, uh, in this portal. We uh, define or working on operational roles and tasks and procurement rules, etc. And I think if once uh, a similar uh, project or similar portal or global project is run in Switzerland, we can bring some, uh, some uh, input for, for, for such a project and maybe some other topics, but that's it. Thank you very much.
I'm a little bit late, but that's it. Thank you for this pre presentation, which opened the horizon of our daily discussions. Are there some questions? Thank you for the presentation. Question about the, the metadata, uh, which is key in the process. Who is in charge to define the metadata to make sure that they are consistent across the different offices uh, and that they are usable for the search queries that you have? Um, that's a challenge of, uh, of the project, so of, um, uh, of us as the Swiss Federal Archive to uh, define this kind of uh, metadata, metadata set. That was part of the measure to, uh, related to, to standards. So uh, we're in the process of defining a standard for this uh, metadata. And this is done in collaboration with uh, current uh, offices who are supplying data to make sure that at least we uh, are consistent with what they usually have in their own uh, domain. But we won't have a solution that covers all the possible, uh, we won't do a, a, a union of all the metadata uh, uh, values or parameters from the different topics. We try to concentrate on a subset which uh, will give access to uh, major information. Other questions? Thank you very much. I, I wonder um, which kind of exploitation system for your servers is the most able to handle all of these uh, multifaceted uh, uh, tasks you are endeavoring with your approach? Um, well, uh, in fact, we don't need a very powerful system because we are, we are just managing uh, a, let's say fairly small database. Uh, each data set has 20, 20 parameters. We speak here from, uh, we speak here from uh, 1,000 to 2,000 data sets. In the, in the successful OGT portal in UK probably they have 20, 30 I don't know exactly how much uh, data sets available. So we, we are not really facing a huge uh, amount of data that requires something very spatial. So nothing like um, uh, Linux open source or? Uh, it's Linux, okay. I have here the technical specialist. To... Yeah, okay, so but Apache, is Apache behind that, and uh, it's a Linux machine. But, yeah. Hello. Um, I was wondering, uh, have you already contacted uh, other administration or been contacted by administration in Switzerland or in other countries to link themselves to your experience? Oh, yes, we, we have... Uh, a very uh, regular contact with uh, a network of OGT uh, um, uh, portal supplier. It's called Dachli. It's uh, uh, German, Germany, uh, Austria, um, uh, Liechtenstein, and Switzerland who are regularly uh, talking together about these uh, these OGT portals and. Um, yeah, so, um, and now regarding, regarding over uh, administration levels, uh, since we are in, the, in this pilot uh, status of this project, we didn't do a lot of uh, publicity or promotion or active uh, um, 
uh, contact uh, with uh, uh, other administrations in order to, for them to be present at the portal. Uh, but we have some contact of uh, other um, offices or cantons who are interested to, to publish in the future. Okay, thank you very much. No, no? still a question? <laughs> uh, and I'm sorry to hold everybody in back from, from uh, oh dear, I have to turn the volume down now. Uh, I, I, I'm terribly sorry, I don't mean to hold any up, anybody up from, from going home. Uh, thank you for a very interesting presentation. I did want to compliment you on taking the tack here in Switzerland of not allowing applications to obscure access to the original raw data. That, this is a decision that unfortunately not all countries have taken, which can make the research data virtually unusable for research. Uh, what I did want to ask you was, if you could very briefly, you mentioned dynamic databases um, that are provided by the original host institutions. What regulations uh, if any, do you have or do you plan for having these dynamic databases periodically archived as snapshots over time? So that a researcher who pulls a bunch of time series data out of a dynamic uh, database goes and does his PhD research the committee says, oh, you missed five more time series that you forgot to pick up. Does he have to go and do all of his analysis over again, or can he get the database from two years ago? Um, I think I don't have the, the answer to this question, but what I can comment is that um, we, as the Swiss Federal Archive, is interested to also archive some of the data which will be linked through this, uh, through this uh, OGD portal. That's one of the connections we have uh, by being so active in this, in this project. Um, I don't think it is for the purpose you mentioned uh, to get um, a static version at a precise time of interest for one person. It's, it is more for, uh, for um, the purpose of the archival uh, activities of uh, an uh, archival unit as, as ours. Um, nevertheless, there are also some ideas that a database could be available as dumped or as linked data. And uh, if it is as a linked data, we can imagine that uh, there will be a way for uh, uh, a researcher to make a dump of uh, an RDF store uh, to get his own version at a very precise time of uh, a database which is uh, live uh, available also. I don't know if it answered really your, your question. 